The proposed framework for generative AI governance proposes nine areas that will help build a trusted and safe AI ecosystem. The AI Verify Foundation and the Infocom Media Development Authority hope that the framework will facilitate global discussion on AI as well. Uh, it builds on existing AI governance frameworks, which offer guidelines on traditional AI that rely on data sets to generate results. Gen AI not only has similar problems as traditional AI, but also creates new challenges. Now with Gen AI, content can be altered and misinformation generated easily. And that's why two main areas of focus are security and content provenance. And that's to ensure that the, there is the need for innovation, that it doesn't compromise safety. A user should be able to identify misinformation or determine where and how content is generated with the help of tools like watermarking, for example. Four other areas cover the development and reliability of Gen AI models. AI models. For example, data that is used must be from trusted sources. Proper testing procedures also need to be created. A structure needs to be put in place to ensure that issues are reported quickly and that people who are affected are notified. The framework places emphasis on accountability for all players involved in that development chain. It suggests a model of shared responsibility when problems arise. It also lays out the premise that AI should, above all else, be used to benefit the public. AI must be accessible to everyone and must be used to boost growth, especially for developing countries. More on this, we have Professor Simon Chesterman. He's Vice Provost, Educational Innovation at NUS. He's also the Senior Director of AI Governance at AI Singapore as an organization that brings together research institutions and AI startups. Thanks for joining us this evening, Professor Chesterman. Uh, it, Dawn was just outlining the many different areas in which this new framework will take on the new challenges posed by generative AI. Now, no framework, no matter how comprehensive, is going to be tackling every challenge. But specifically, what, at this point, even with this framework, where do you see it falling short? Um, I think this is really a timely document because the last year or so is the period in which we started to see the real promise of AI. We saw AI uh, producing human-like text, producing amazing images. Uh, but as your report uh, demonstrates, that, that brings with it risks. Uh, and so this document is really an attempt to present state-of-the-art um, accountability framework uh, that will shape discussion into the future. So it's not meant to be the last word. Indeed, it's in many ways meant to be the first word. It's starting a conversation. Because in the course of this last year, where we've really seen the promise of AI and some of the risks, and again, your report's highlighted some of them, but that also includes hallucinations, the impact of copyright violation in addition to possible workforce displacement. Um, around the world, we've seen a conversation start about governance of AI, but often that's uh, too narrow and too broad. It's too narrow in that it tends to focus on the sort of European, American, sometimes the Chinese view. Uh, but also too broad, and it starts with great generalities. So the advantage of this document is that it starts to drill into the details. How will we actually evaluate these tools? How will we actually test whether we're getting proper accountability? Uh, but it doesn't try to be complete because it's really not meant to be the last word. It's meant to be the start, as I said, of a conversation about governance of generative AI. Professor Chesterman, you mentioned some of the challenges there of hallucination, uh, the fact that the previous framework for traditional AI perhaps too narrow in its specifics. There's also this need to reach out to global partners as far as the uh, consideration of, of challenges or dangers is concerned, as far as Gen AI is concerned. Why is that collaboration so important going forward? Yeah, I think it's really telling that Singapore chose to launch this at Davos, uh, as indeed it did launch the original model AI governance framework back in 2019. And that I think is really meant to send a signal that Singapore is interested in partnering with all stakeholders, uh, in particular with industry, uh, because one of the biggest shifts in the last decade or so of AI research is the move of fundamental research along with development and deployment to industry, uh, which is why it's open AI, 
Microsoft, Google are the key players here, where a decade ago, it might have been MIT, Stanford, to some extent, National University of Singapore, NTU, and so on. Um, so I think that is an important way of saying we need industry to be involved. We need partners in the private sector. Um, but also Singapore has been very active in forums like ASEAN, where we chaired the ASEAN Digital Ministers Meeting, the Forum of Small States, the United Nations, uh, the Global Partnership on AI. Uh, and I think that really shows the need to cover all your bases, as it were, uh, in order to ensure that this conversation is a truly global one, um, that it's not just a conversation between Europeans and the Americans or between tech companies, but includes all stakeholders who have an interest, which means all of us. Uh, Professor, uh, you were speaking, you, you said this is the first word in the conversation that will continue for decades, for a long time yet, on how we govern AI. So one issue, uh, provenance, uh, to be sure where it's coming from and how it might have been altered along the way. Uh, the framework for traditional AI dealt with issues like transparency. Now this is a new challenge that we then have to deal with. Uh, what will this mean in practical terms for people who develop generative AI models? Yeah, that's an excellent question and a really difficult one, um, because I think we've seen the challenge of identifying what is real, what is fake. Personally, I didn't think that the fake news videos of uh, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long, DPM Lawrence Wong looked that realistic, but there is a risk as this technology gets better that it'll be harder and harder to determine what's fake. So um, the document, um, the model framework, outlines some of the current practices, but it's also quite alive to the limitations. Uh, and I think it highlights really um, two of the key fault lines. One is um, it's easy to label something as fake, provided that um, the company that made it and the forum through which it's transmitted remains constant. But it's pretty easy uh, to make a copy of that that doesn't bring with it the same watermarking. Uh, it also highlights that there's a real difficulty in uh, labeling text. Uh, and so that's why it also highlights that where we might need to go in the future is not labeling the things that are fake, that are synthetically generated. We might need to consider going down the path of labeling what is true, what is verifiable, and have some sort of means of tracing its provenance back. Uh, because rather than trying to identify everything that's fake, given the ability of this technology to generate ever larger quantities of ever more realistic human-like information, uh, it might be simpler to focus on the things that really are genuine. Uh, and that's linked with another, uh, I think, quite useful part of the document, which is not just the kind of framework, the accountability mechanisms, but the way that's communicated to the public. So one of the things it talks about is a kind of food label approach. And I think most of us are familiar with food labeling, um, when you're talking about food that goes out to the general population, there are some poisons that are outlawed, uh, some things that are restricted, but there's a whole swathe of areas in which we're able to make choices, but the government industry wants us to make informed choices. So much as we do that in our food diet, I, I think we're going to have to do that in our information diet if we're going to uh, keep alive to our own responsibility as consumers, as users, in uh, identifying what we can rely on and what we probably shouldn't. Oh, thanks for sharing those insights with us, Professor Simon Chesterman from NUS.